what we've got here is a piece of software that Martin Polyakov of uh, Periodic Videos commissioned back in the 80s to enable people, A-level students, to test their chemistry knowledge. And if you look on Periodic Videos... Perhaps they were running out of storage space. You'll see a video where Martin and I get this up and running on the BBC Micro and actually start it working. It was an interesting exercise and we'll have a look later at how we can actually get the software off the BBC Micro onto something that we can run on a modern computer, a PC, a Mac, even a iPhone or anything else which has got the right sort of emulator. It's relatively easy to look at images and videos and those sorts of things, but programs are, are harder, right? Most images, perhaps, and this is perhaps not necessarily a good idea, um, we tend to compress. So we compress them so they take up less space. And so if we've got something like a JPEG, we can access it because it's so ubiquitous, we can just access it. But I shoot raw my SLR. Thinking about it, I'm not so certain that 22 years down the line, raw files will be that easy to access. Now, chances are I shoot with a pretty common Canon DSLR, so chances are that yes, that will still be supported. But it's making me think about it. Actually, should I go and convert them into something more convenient? So it's counterintuitive in some respects. So you're all shooting raw to preserve as much possible quality as you can. And actually you might preserve the files for longer if you put them into a compressed format because they're more common. Exactly, yeah. So it's perhaps best keeping them in both. And it's actually the same for a piece of software is that we need to be able to decode the data. So to any media, we need to be able to decode it and use it. Now for something like a, an image file, for a video, that's relatively straightforward. You could write one. When it gets to something like Martin's chemistry games, we can access the data on the disk. We can start to see what some of these are. This looks like it's a basic program, so let's load in that. So yeah, that's, that's one of the programs. Well, let's have a look at some of the others. So this obviously looks like the periodic table, calcium, selenium, titanium. I suspect this was the one that you had to guess what was in there. We can start to see what's going on here and start to see bits of it because we can understand it. As soon as you've compressed it, you need to know how it's compressed before you can run it. So it's a good argument that you should keep your data in an uncompressed format, but then of course that takes up even more space and storage is plentiful, but it's not exactly cheap. So you probably do want to compress it, but if you're going to do that, do it in a file format that will be common. I mean, text files, put them inside .zip files, don't use some weird and wonderful wacky compression format that you've found that will save you 1% extra on the file size 10 years down the line. Chances are we'll probably still be able to unzip a zip file, possibly not the weird and wacky format that you might have used. When it comes to programs though, in a system like this, not only do we need to copy the data and the program, we also need to emulate the complete system that we're going to run it on. So for example, if I wanted to get Martin's games working on my Mac or on a PC, not only do I need to copy the data off this disk, and that in itself is an interesting issue because I have a five and a quarter inch floppy drive in the BBC Micro, but I don't have one in my Mac and I don't have a USB five and a quarter inch floppy drive. In fact, I would hesitate to say that there's probably never been one produced. You get three and a half inch floppy drives with USB output, but not five and a quarter. So we still need to find an interesting way of getting the data off. Now we could find a PC with a five and a quarter inch floppy drive. I've got one over there. The drive doesn't work, unfortunately, but we then need to write software to understand the disk format. What I actually did to do this is this machine is networked. This is on an earlier networking system called Econet, which Acorn developed, which I can then get it onto the Archimedes. And then that's got a three and a half inch floppy disk drive, which I can use a PC format to copy it over to the Mac. So if we look here, I wrote this program. What this actually does is it reads each sector, sector by sector, track by track, off the floppy disk. We get that and we just write it out to a file, one sector after another, and we store it on the network until eventually we've got a copy of the file sitting on the Archimedes. In this case, it's called chem dot image and chem 2 dot image. I then copied them via a floppy disk onto my Mac using the floppy drive over here. And then I can use a BBC emulator. How many emulators can you run at the same time? Um, quite a lot. In fact, I have a machine running 
a BBC emulator, a Mac Plus emulator, NT4, and an Amiga emulator at the moment. So you can run quite a lot on a standard machine. Then that must be running at full speed, but you can get things there. Modern machines can emulate these things pretty well. So I've taken an open source emulator for the BBC Micro called BBEM. I didn't write it, I just hacked it to run nicely on my Mac. And so if we start the emulator and we can boot it, and we should see exactly the same software running on the modern computer. But again, we're having to take it and emulate the whole machine to run it. So when we archive software, we probably want to at least archive something that can run the software as well. In this case, an emulator will be sufficient. And you can write these emulators anything. There's even a JavaScript BBC Micro emulator, which means that we could put this in a web page and then you'd be able to run it off that. Break key, and then let go break. Wow. And it starts up. This is really exciting. That sound. The computer was a lot more visceral in those days. They yes. made noises and they sort of, you heard yes. them going. So it's not quite centered on the screen.